Hebron is not only a flashpoint. Hebron is like a condense of the whole conflict. It's at the same time the beauty of where we are right now. It's the, the historic beauty of Palestine and at the same time the reality of occupation and settlements in the middle of the old city. Despite what images you get from Hebron, actually Hebron is the biggest Palestinian city and is a thriving economy and is also one of the oldest Palestinian cities with a fantastic architecture and a fantastic history. So this is, I, I would invite everybody to come to Hebron. I think people in Hebron, like people anywhere else in Palestine, want to have a normal life. They don't want to be seen in that prism of the conflict only. They don't want to be seen in the prism of a very orientalist approach of, oh, but the Palestinian savages. A lot of what we're doing with Tata's Kitchen, we're trying to tell a different Palestinian story. A different doesn't mean we're making it look nice. It doesn't mean we're disconnecting it from the reality. We're just showing another part of our daily life because part of resilience is actually going on with your daily life. The story of Hebron, the presence of the settlers has been told since day one. It's been told in every shape possible, whether it's on the media, whether it's with things like international observers being present in the city, and, and everybody's read the reports and at the end, not done much. We're not claiming we're going to be doing much, except actually showing a bit the positives of Hebron, the beauty of the city, the beauty of its people, and the food, of course. Yalla, khalas, Jack. Kaffee. I want food. Yalla. السلام عليكم مكوناتها سكر ومية ونشا وبعدين نطبخها بتقعد على الطائفة على النار تقريبا أربع خمس ساعات بننزلها بنحطها في الطبليات زي الجوز في عندك طبليات تورجينا؟ شكرا بننزلها من طنجة من على الطبلية ونحطها وبعدين بنرش عليها سكر نار من تحتيها وسكر فوقيها عشان ما تلزقش and <laughs> This is fantastic. Every time I come to Hebron, I have to get some. I'm actually going to take back 10 boxes with me. It's one flavor. They've been doing it for 180 years, and it tastes the same. I wasn't here 180 years ago, but since I've been a kid, I've been having this. It's the same consistency, the same subtle flavor. It looks very sugary, but actually it's not. It's not overpoweringly sweet. This is a little 
delight. It does deserve its its name. Salam alaikum. She be gentlemen. Like how fresher can you get than this? This saro. سماء حب صح؟ سماء حب من الخليل؟ ايوه شغل بلادنا شغل بلادنا، اغلبك بدي كيلو كيلو حلو جايز يو نو سماء which we use a lot of is a red powder usually but I use it like this and these are fresh سماء بيز these are fantastic what I do is I use them sometimes to infuse some of the food and sometimes I just ground them in my place because they keep the flavor. And the best sumer you can get in Palestine comes from Hebron and the area around the city of Hebron. And these are fantastic dried tomatoes. The bandora is also Khalil. Just kissed with the sun of Palestine and not too salty. Mm. There's one other thing I want here because it attracted me to the shop. If you see the different sieves there, they're used for different things. So the very wide one at the end there is used for za'atar or for tobacco. And then the finer ones here are used for wheat, and then this is the one I want that's used for flour. And صبابة شكرا العفو شو حسابنا هيك يا معلم؟ هذا نعاج شغل الربيع هذا لبن نظيف وممتاز حليب صافي بس بقر بقر؟ بقر اه انا دغري معك هذاك هذا بيختلف مع احترامي بالنسبة للجودة هذا غير يعني بدك تسوي منسف لهذا؟ ما بزبط انا باكل من هذا من هذا؟ أغلبك اثنين كيلو بحيرة وعندي اشتريت أول موسم من الرمادين عشرين كيلو قايز لبن جميل is the base we use to do منزف to do ششبرك and Hebron does some of the best the Jamjum family they have two different لبن جميل one done with cow and one down with the sheep which is the original one this is the nicest dried yogurt. You know, it reminds me of Parmesan a bit. We use it rehydrated to do recipes, but what I also use it for, as it is over salad, I just ground a bit of it. It's fantastic. Shukran, Guys, we better go cook a bit. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام مرحبا ياد كيفك؟ شكرا انه مستقبلينا بمطبخك وعندك الله يخليك شكرا شرف لنا شرف لنا So today we're gonna go see Iyad 
and we're going to be having al ab mahshi. Al ab mahshi are stuffed lamb necks. I use them in my kitchen all the time because it's one of the softest meats that you can get off the sheep. It just requires very long cookings at slow temperatures. And in Hebron, we fill them up with rice. In other places, we fill them up with frika. And what I do, I cook them for 18 hours at very low temperature, and then use two forks to split them apart into an ifiroshe with a very intense sauce out of them. But in Iyad's stuffed lamb necks are gonna be better than the ones I do. شكرا لاستضافتك ومطبخك لنا وانا شايف خيرات الخليل كلها هون اها هي الضلعات نظفتيها شكلك غسلتيها هلا طبعا بنقعها شويه بالخل ساعة زمان عشان اللحمه تكون طريه بعدين بغسلها ثلاث مرات اربع مرات عشان يروح الدم منها وبنشفها طبعا بجيبها من اللحام Basically, what we have here are lamb necks that have been deboned. So the central bone is out. They're ready to be stuffed, and Imiads wash them with a bit of vinegar, so they're ready. We have a bit of meat. So this is beef meat with a bit of lamb, fatty lamb meat. هون في شوية أصفى باللحم. And then the rice, almonds, cashew nuts, and the spices. And for the spices, we have pepper. cardamom, pepper, ginger, curry, two types of allspice blends, and um, cloves. It's as basic as this, and this is one of the tastiest Palestinian dishes we'll ever have. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're going to be doing is pre-cooking a bit the meat that's going to go in the stuffing and the rice. So the meat goes in, a bit of vegetable oil and then the spices. I love this. Being told what to do in a kitchen is something I adore because I get to learn. You know, stuffed lamb necks is a delicacy because it's one of the softest meats of the lamb. الرعب انت وقت ايش تطبخيها؟ في العيد في الاعياد العيد الفطر والعيد الاضحى العيد العيد او في العزايم اذا اجى ناس يعني في العزايم اولادك اللي بالغربه اجوا اجوا اولادي في الغربه بيقولوا يستنوا بالرقاب والله بيقولوا لي صورين لي اياها عشان مشتهيين يعني Now the meat is cooking for the stuffing and you can smell it. You know, for me, that's that's a magical moment because it's it's a bit of base of a lot of our Palestinian cuisine. Is the moment you start cooking the stuff, the stuffing, the meat there with the pepper, the allspice, and the salt. There's nothing much in it yet. But it gives you this smell that says the kitchen is starting to work. In Hebron, in the old city of Hebron, the Israeli occupation has taken over part of the old city totally. And you can only access that bit freely if you're Israeli or if you're a foreign tourist. If you're Palestinian, you get stopped, searched, and very often denied that movement. 
And, and I have an example of a friend of mine who lives down there. From her window, you see the cemetery where her family is buried. She cannot cross that one street because she's Palestinian. She needs to go around the whole city of Hebron to be able to access the tomb of her father and mother. It's insane. This creates a very bizarre dynamic because on one side, Hebron has the most thriving economy in Palestine. It has creative people that are doing wonderful stuff. And literally next door or on top, you have settlers trying to steal, purchase, and take control of more and more Palestinian lands here. People can't really run a normal business here because you have the settlement that is next door and on top where settlers throw garbage on top of people's heads. You have nightly and daily incursions of the, of the Israeli army or the settlers that just make people's life totally insane. You have Shuhada Street, which used to be a thriving market, where you still have today three Palestinian shop owners that managed to stay literally on the other side of the Israeli military checkpoint. And when I remember coming to see them before all of this insanity was put in place, they were tiny shopkeepers and the whole street was full of people. Here it's just blatantly open. You see how the Israeli settler movement, how the Israeli military is on a daily basis pushing people out of Hebron by making their life impossible. And every time I come to Hebron and I see that there's one more house that's been renovated by the Palestinians, I just feel, wow, resilience is what's happening. You know, that's fantastic about palace. We, yes, we always say you put a bit of olive oil. We're actually a bit more generous with the olive oil. Uh -huh. <laughs> Basically, the cloves have a bit of nutmeg also. Look, this is the color is fantastic. The those spices with the olive oil is just magic. So now we're getting to the fun part, which consists of basically massaging the meat with the spices. And we do the outside, and you rub it in well. It has to go inside every little crevice of the meat, because that's going to be releasing flavor for four hours in an oven, three and a half to four hours later. And the inside gets well inside. smothered with the right with the oils and spice. Look at it; it's a bit all over. Rub it in well. You know what, this meat smells so good. With those spices, I could start chopping it off and eating it. So 
now the meat is dry, the water gone. We're gonna add some water and put the rice and basically we're cooking the stuffing. فاطي الرز هلا So in Iyad has rectified the spices now. She's put in put in a bit of cinnamon, some salt, and now the meat is practically cooked. She's going to be adding the rice, and then we're gonna leave it to cook, and then stuff it in those fantastic lamb necks. The meat is absorbing all of that oil, all of these spices, and it's getting flavored. And the rice goes in, a bit of water, and we're ready. So now we're gonna toast the almonds. If you see the other, uh, the cashew nuts have been toasted. And here the rice and meat are cooking. السمنة شو بتسوي فيها؟ الرز صح؟ You see this is the ghee that has had the flavors of the almonds. I'm asking in the what do you do with it? She said, on the rice. That's the little tricks that you get from tetas which nobody else does. Nobody tells you what you do. Usually in recipes you get like, oh, fry the almonds and then you go off to another stage. And this is flavor. This is like totally intense. On the rice, it gives it that flavor. That's the tater secret. This is ghee. Look at it. This, I think people think I'm crazy when I do it, but I can't accept. Tastes of the Palestinian sheep that have given us this. Let's get sheep in dunya somewhere. This with hotty. And it doesn't take much. It's just a tiny bit of ghee that gives the rice the flavor. So now we've turned off the heat, and with the steam, it's just going to go on fluffing up. ليش هاي الطبخة من طبخاتك المفضلة؟ أنت ليش أنت بتحبيها؟ زاكية زاكية اه زاكية ولحم زاكية يعني بحبها كثير والولاد بحبوها طلب الأولاد طلب الأولاد اه بحبها عشان بعملها زاكية يعني بالضبط بطلبوها يعني شو سر يعني. طبيخك؟ النفس نفس أنا عندي نفس في الطبيق طول البال طويلة بال كمان مش إنه عجل 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 لا طولة البال والهدوء بحب البهارات والنفس يعني وكمان بحب البهارات يعني اهم شيء في الاكل عندي البهارات الطبيخ لايكس يوزينغ ذا سبايسز شي لايكس ذس ديش بيكوز اتس ا نايس ديش بيكوز هير كيدز لايك ات بت وين اي اسك هير واتش ذا سيكريت وي جيت ذا سيم انسر فروم اذر تيتاز نفس ويتش از اجين ان ترانسليتابل نفس مينز ذا ابيتايت مينز ذا باشن فور ذا فود لايك a whole concept which comes from here. So now the rice is ready. We've put some here. We're going to put some more. So this is, look, it's fantastic. The spices, the rice, the mincemeat, and now we're ready to stuff. Hello, I'm gonna show you, right? The top the rolls or cashew. Smahili. Up. You sometimes need to get your hands dirty. And a bit of the table dirty.
is so masterful. It's impressive. We tie up the end of the necks because the rice has to stay inside. You know, the rice is already cooked, quite cooked. So the rice will stay inside and it'll cook evenly on the outside and the meat starts becoming fondant. Head elephant. Yeah, I think it has you. So this is tomato, yogurt, spices, so tomato concentrate. And we cover the inside of the bag with it. It will give it a bit of acidity and a nice rounded flavor. Yeah. So you see we've coated the bag with the tomato and this is where a very old traditional recipe meets modernity with the bag. And the neck goes in. أنا خليلية بس مواليد القدس يعني ف... يعني أهلك كانوا ساكنين بالقدس؟ اه طول عمرنا في القدس احنا وقت ايش جيتي هالخليل؟ هلا هلا تقريبا متجوزة 40 سنة مواليد 40 سنة يعني عمرني هون يعني قضيته يعني بالخليل بالخليل اه بالخليل بس لغتي يعني. طبعا مش خليلية يعني <تصفيق> <تصفيق> انت لما جيتي على الخليل تعلمت كنت متعلمة طبيخ لا ما ولا هون تعلمت كنت صغيرة تقريبا آه. 18 سنة أوكي. جوزي كان في الغربة في السعودية أوكي. هو اللي علمنا الطبيخ آه. جوزي آه. هو اللي علمنا الطبيخ طبيخ شاطر وعنده نفس وبقول الشغلة أطبقها وتكون مزبوطة مية في المية آه لا يعني يا دوب بيضة ما كنتش عرفة لي لا آه. لا يعني علمنا تلف الورق الفوارغ آه. الكرشات كيف بنحشيهم الأشياء الصعبة يعني كان بس هاي كانت إشياء بتطبخوها أنتوا بالقدس آه طبعا آه إنه طابع الدار عندكو ضل ضليتوا مرتبطين بالثقافة تبعة الخليل يعني لا 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 إنه مشان ما أتسى الطبيخ بيختلف عنا لا لا خلص إحنا خلال ضلينا متطبعين في الخلال يعني أوكي. يعني معظم أكلنا خلص نفس الإشي خليل خليل يعني بس لما جيت هون برضو تطورات طور. أكتر يعني آه تطورنا أكتر في الطبيخ شو اكثر طبق انت بتحبي؟ ورق ومحشي وجاج محشي اه الخليل تغيرت كثير ب 40 سنه وقت ما انت اه كثير طبعا تغير. يعني اول لما اول ما جيت كثير تغلبت انا يعني من النوع اللي كثير تغلبت يعني ليه؟ من ناحيه العادات والتقاليد آه. بعدين تاقلمت يعني شوي شوي تاقلمت وتعودت عليهم هلا اقول له اسكن القدس بقول لك لا ليه لا؟ اول كنت لما اجي هون ازعلك اكتئب يعني و... هلا صار العكس هلا لا صار العكس يعني كونت صدقات وصحبات 
طبع الخليل برضه غير شكل فيه ألفة في محبة بتلاقي النخوة فيهم يعني غير عن القدس حتى غير عن القدس كبيرة عددها بالخليل اه طبعا عائدنا What's your next question? So I ease into it. هلا ثقافيا الخليل كمان تغيرت انا عم بشوف كل مره باجي بشوف بنايات جديده ومولاي احنا اهل الخليل عائلهم تجاري انت اهلك بالقدس بالتسعينات وبعد صار اصعب الواحد يروح يجي شوي صح؟ انه يعني آه وهذا كله احنا بيت العالم اول كان الخليل. كان اول هاوين ولا شيء لا ثلث ساعه الواحد بيكون ثلث ساعه ربع ساعه ساعه الا ربع بنكون في القدس بس بعد ما دخلت السلطة آه، تغير الوضع صار في محسوم أهل الخليل ما بيقدروا يروحوا إلا بتصريح إحنا معنا هوية عن طريق المعبر بسهولة يعني معنا هوية القدس وعنده ولد وبنت مع هوية القدس بعدها بعدين لغوا لغوا صاروا أهل خليل آه. بالمطبخ لاحظت في عندك كل هاي المغناطيس من الثلاجة من دول العالم كلها هدول انت سافرتي ولا من اولادك ولا كيف؟ لا والله انا شكله بتجمعيهم لا لا انا بنت بطوطه زي ما بقول ابن آه. بطوطه اولادي بالغربه دبي وابو ظبي آه. كل سنه بروح عندهم في آه. دبي وابو ظبي فبجمع تاع دبي وابو ظبي آه. لي ولد في المانيا آه. العام رحت زرته آه. فالله يرضى عليه فرر لي كل اوروبا الله واو فررني رحت على بلجيكي على امستردام على فرنسا قضينا آه. السنه الجديده آه. مثل فعلا ابن بطوطه اه <تصفيق> مثل مثل هلا راس السنه الجديده في باريس واو ورحت على اسبانيا على أنا ايطاليا انا فلسطيني بس انا عشت فتره طويله بفرنسا آه وجدي ابو امي مولود بفرنسا باريس Army planes, military planes, and they're really a reminder of the reality. You know, we've had a great time cooking in the kitchen. We're enjoying a fantastic coffee while the necks get ready, and this just reminds us of the reality we're in. And it's really obnoxious. It's the first time she hears them here. سنة 120 سنة مم. الله يقويكم انا رابع جيل من بعد تسلسل من الجد للجد من دار مين انتو؟ انا زعتري اهلا من بيت لحم انا انا شاف ببيت لحم وعم نسوي نصور حوالي فلسطين نروح على كل المدن نحكي على الاكل تبعنا اهلا وسهلا فيك نتشرف بنكون عندك نحن سعيدين يعني الله يقويكم اذا كان في اياك نشاطات احنا بنشجعك بنشجعك على الفلوس شكرا يعطيك الف عافيه <laughs> so you see, this is again like the spice shop we were in, like the Halum, the delight shop we were in. This place has been 120 years in action, and he is the fourth generation from the Zatari family doing sweets in Hebron. These two are Harisa, which are semolina based sweets, which I simply cannot resist. But then You'll find a bit of all of these sweets across the Levant. But I think in each city it has a different taste. And this one looks delicious. We're going to taste some. So they use ghee, not butter, not margarine, real ghee, and you feel it there. This is some. Then. 
بعد استنطعت بلكي اذكى هريفة عمري اكلتها حبيبي الله يقويكم شكرا Enjoying coffee and chit chatting, and now the necks are ready. They've been in the oven for two and a half, three hours. I'm gonna go have a look. Yalla. Yalla, I'm sure you see him in the morning. الاسباب اللي بتحبي المطبخ هو البهارات فعلا هون ببين قديش انت والبهارات في فن باستخدامك للبهارات الكميات اللي استخدمتيها وهي شفتك بتبهري بالعين بالعين اه ما في عيال لا ما في شعيرات بالعين يو نو بيبل ثينك لامب از جريسي فاري يو هاف تو تيست لام نكس تو انديرستاند ذات Lamb is one of the best meats you can ever have. She will be selling like a jad. She will be khayal. We'll see you next episode of Tata's Kitchen. Because now we're going to go on eating. We have to finish. I'm going to finish the rest of the meat today. We're going to have to finish those two next, both of us. See you next time with another Palestinian grandmother. And I'm so happy to have met in Iyad. Cooked with her and eating this fantastic food. This for me is Hebron. Is the slow cooked lamb meat, the spices, the ghee. Like this is a plate that summarizes Hebron for me. I love it. I'm a big fan of you.